Hi, everyone. I am James Whitney from the Maryland Assistive Technology Program, and I am the AT clinician here. Um, and this is episode one of our Caregiver Collaborative series. And we have a few episodes that highlight different assistive technology devices that can be utilized by caregivers for all kinds of uh, disabilities and hopes to empower them to uh, assist their clients and increase their independence, quality of life through the use of adaptive equipment and assistive technology devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and uh, thanks for joining us. So, so just really quick to start this off, I'm just gonna talk about MDTAP really quick and the services we provide. And what we do is provide statewide access to assistive technology through equipment demonstrations, through loans, through our reuse arm, financing, and also we do trainings. We do webinars and all different kinds of topics uh, around AT. And all those can be found on our website, mdtap.org. And assistive technology, also known as AT. So if I say AT, I'm referring to assistive technology devices and that can encompass a wide variety of items and techniques from low tech, such as maybe a cane or even a handheld glass magnifier and also high-tech devices that could be like screen readers and video magnifiers, even eye gaze technology, and so on and so forth. So the idea behind assistive technology, or AT, is to increase an, indiv an individual with a disability's independence and also quality of life. So, so this is our flow chart here that I'm going to briefly just kind of talk about that as soon as someone reaches out to us, which could be through phone call, email, or our online survey on our website, then I can then talk to them and, and potentially set up a consultation. That would be me speaking with that individual a little bit more about their disability, their abilities, and kind of where they might be having issues or struggling and want to just be able to do a task or activity a little bit more successfully. During that consultation, I'll find out all this information. And at which point I can then potentially uh, recommend a couple of different AT devices that I can then demonstrate for them, show them how it works. And if they're in person with me, I can have them try it out. If it's virtual, I can talk about it and show them. And at which point then all parties involved, whether that's just me and the individual, or that could be me and the caregiver or the therapist or whoever it might be involved in that consultation, then uh, at, at that point, if all parties agree that they would like to try one of those devices out, then our uh, AT demo and loan library can then uh, uh, loan them a device for up to 30 days to have them try it out in their natural environment. And, and, and whether that just be at home, school or work or all the above, then if that individual has a chance to take that device home with them for 30 days, try it out, see if they like it, see if they don't like it. That's also valuable information. And at which point, hopefully the, the uh, process will end in them finding a device that fits their needs and will help them uh, overall be more successful in whatever activity or task that they, they might be trying to accomplish. And then hopefully once we do narrow it down, then at that point, if that person wishes to, to buy a device, we don't sell them personally here, but, but I can help uh, contact them with vendors and a price comparison shop and hopefully at times find discounts and all for them. Um, so that's the acquisition. And then I will get into the other parts a little bit down the line here. And also this is a little uh, snapshot of our website online, which is www.mdtap.org, mdtap. And on this website, you will be able to find our virtual AT library, which has a list of all the AT devices that we have. And it, it, uh, it may not have every single device because we're always acquiring new devices and, and uh, we try our best to keep it updated, but it's got a uh, very nice list. Uh, that has a lot of different devices on there from blind low vision or deaf hard of hearing devices or uh, aids for, for daily living or um, uh, other computer access devices, braille note takers, so on and so forth. So there's a great list of devices on our AT library. So I always implore our clients to go ahead and take a look and just see if anything stands out to them. And then, and then I'd be happy to, to talk with them further about those devices and potentially loan them out to that client. Uh, you can also find on there our home modifications directory that helps kind of walk through our clients through the uh, process of getting home modifications installed in their house. And it's got information on uh, contractors, vendors, tax information, 
and really breaks down that whole process. So that's a nice resource there. We also have our loan closet, uh, uh, excuse me, loan closet directory. And that has a list of a, a bunch of different nonprofits and other uh, organizations and agencies that it can help loan out durable medical equipment, which is something that we don't do here just for sanitary reasons. And, uh, and also mobility equipment we don't do because we believe that a, a PT or a mobility specialist should be involved in that process. And we don't wanna just give anybody any type of mobility equipment that might not put them in a safe position. So we also don't do that, but there is a directory of lots of different nonprofits and, and agencies that do have things like hospital beds, wheelchairs, rollators, walkers, shower chairs, tub benches, and so forth. So all that durable medical equipment, it can be found through other agencies on our loan closet directory. And lastly, we also have a list of our archived webinars of different trainings and things we do online that are uh, recorded and saved and stored for uh, viewing purposes. And just really quickly, a little bit about me. I am James Whitney. I have a background in occupational therapy. I graduated from Virginia Commonwealth University. And upon graduating from VCU, I began working with MDTAP as a assistive technology clinician. And I really enjoy being able to, to uh, combine the parts of OT with assistive technology and mesh them together to help increase an individual's access to their surrounding world and environment through the use of assistive technology devices. Um, so it's very OT being able to use AT to help an individual uh, be able to interact with their environment and increase success with their daily occupations and so forth. So this is the AT for Caregivers webinar series. And this is episode one, which is gonna highlight uh, certain remote supports, monitoring, and also uh, ECUs or environmental control units. So I'm just gonna start talking about a few different devices that can be found in our library and be used to empower our caregivers, to empower their clients or patients with the use of these devices. So firstly, what is a remote support? So a remote support is a two-way assistance system that uses real-time communication, such as sensors, cameras, and other technology to connect with an off-site caregiver. And uh, the pay service can be used when hands-on caregiving is not required, or and, and that could include cooking safety, overnight support, medication adherence, fall detection, and a visitor monitoring, and more. So well, whenever a need arises, a remote caregiver can respond through these remote supports. And that could look like a lot of different things. And a caregivers oftentimes aren't with their client or patient 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's great to have these remote supports so that they can still uh, assist their patient or client, even if they are not right there next to them at the time. So firstly, I wanna talk about this device that is available in our library. This is the Sky Angel 911 or 911. And now this can be used to call 911 from inside the home or outside. So it has a two-way speaker phone attached to this device. And now this device can be worn on a lanyard and around the neck, or it can be put in your pocket. And they even have other, uh, uh, just other accessories like a watch, or it could be put in like the pocket of your t-shirt or worn around a belt. Um, so like there, there, there are website online has different accessories that it could be worn with. But the idea behind this device is that it has GPS capabilities. So if anyone's e at a, a elopement risk or, um, or, or a wandering or anything like that, then it's got the GPS built in so you can always know exactly where they are in case one of those instances does occur. It's got no monthly fees or uh, cellular contract fees needed. So once you buy this device once, it is ready to go. Um, it doesn't need to be specially programmed because it has the button on it that can call 911, which uh, as long as it's charged up and functioning correctly, will work. So, um, and, and then it has to be a GPS. So wherever this device might be, it always has GPS tracking it. So that way, um, if it's being used among different patients for different reasons or, or any other reason, it'll still be able to be uh, functional and operate wherever it is. Um, it's waterproof and it only has one button. So there's no uh, complicated process with swiping or dialing numbers. 
Um, so it's great for anybody who might need assistance in uh, a quick instance or moment. And as I said, it's great for, for anyone who, who might be at risk for elopement or wandering as they can always have a way to call 911 and they will always be able to be located through the GPS. So this is uh, a great support for if a caregiver's not around um, and uh, just to be able to keep your client or patient safe or even family member, you know, mom or dad or anyone like that it's, who might be being cared for, great way to keep them safe with fall detection um, because it does have a built-in accelerometer. So that way, if you were to take a fall, um, it would be able to, to pick up that change in, in velocity from being you know, at a standstill to falling over and uh, taking a, a fall. It would be able to actually pick that up and register that and be able to call 911 appropriately if somebody was um, injured or was unable to get up or, or anything like that. Um, so that is the Sky Angel 911. And all of these have built in links embedded in these titles of these devices right here. So um, you could always check them out further with those links. Next, we have a device called My Notify. Um, so this is similar to the Sky Angel 911 as it is a fall detection technology device designed to alert family and friends if a fall occurs. So the wearer receives both a belt clip and a wristband for increased flexibility in various situations. So not everybody wants to have a lanyard and that device around their neck, which is understandable. So this can be worn on a belt loop or a watch, a little bit more discreet, um, and also has no landline or a monthly fees and no contract. So it works in, in a similar fashion to the Sky Angel 911. Um, and I'd pay my notified devices work anywhere the wearer goes. So it also provides independence and also freedom and peace of mind is that you can just keep this thing on you wherever you might be and that it will still be able to operate and, uh, and help with fall detection technology, just like the accelerometer and be able to contact you with a uh, emergency hotline. So that's my notify. And this is sold for a one-time fee of $199. And once you pay that fee, you don't have to pay any monthly fees or contracts. So another device here is the Freedom Emergency Alert. Um, and this is $180 found on Amazon. And this is a uh, emergency alert system also without monthly fees. But the cool thing about this device is that it can program up to four personal contacts. So it, it can be a program that I can set those up ahead of time and I can call maybe, you know, my, my son or daughter first. And then if they don't answer, then I can call maybe a neighbor next door. And then if they don't answer, maybe I can call one more person, you know, whoever it might be, friend, family, caregiver. And then um, lastly, if nobody answers any of those calls, then it will go to 911 next. So this could be used for maybe it's not a medical emergency, but maybe I need help and I need to call someone, then I, I'm able to call a few different people first without having to alert 911 and have, you know, the ambulance not come out and, you know, so it gives people options on who to speak with prior to 911, but then if nobody answers, then it will connect you with a uh, emergency support agent at, at 911 services just to make sure everybody's safe and and all of that. So it also has a 24 hour emergency battery backup. So in case it, uh, it's not charged or it's dying, then there is a, a emergency backup battery. And it's got an extra telephone jack in the base unit so that it can actually connect right to a telephone. Um, so it can be installed right in your house and connect to a telephone. Um, and the, the, it's also water resistant on the dependent part that would be worn on a lanyard or, or put in your pocket or something so that you have that on you is also water resistant. So that's the Freedom Emergency Alert. And there are also other devices just like this one right here is that maybe uh, a caregiver is with you in the house or nearby in a different room, but they're not right next to you. And maybe um, something's needed. Maybe it's a bathroom or a trach suction or you know any other reason that you might need your caregiver in a moment. Um, then I could press this button on this device here that has the, the yellow uh, string or lanyard. I can press that square button and it'll just send a beeping noise to the uh, receiver. 
So it'll transmit a, uh, a sound to this receiver that will then begin beeping, alerting the caregiver that, oh, um, I should go check in on them really quick and make sure everything's okay. So um, it's a really easy, just two-way system, or I'm sorry, one-way system that I can press that button and it'll send a one-way signal to that receiver um, and be able to alert them. So it's really easy to use, one button, no installation, it just runs on batteries. Um, it's got up to a 100-foot range. So even if somebody's outdoors or just somewhere you know, semi nearby, but maybe not right in your immediate area, I can press that button and alert them. Um, and it can be set to vibrate or beep. So if there was someone who was deaf or hard of hearing, it can, uh, it can actually vibrate um, as well as have an, an a audible chiming noise. Um, so it's voiceless paging. So it's not a uh, like walkie talkie by any means, um, but it is able to alert someone for the cost of $34.95 on Maxi Aids, I found this device. And this is a personal pager. Um, and it's wireless. Don't know if I, uh, if I mentioned that, but there's no wires needed on either side of this device, just battery operated. Um, and over here is a ring doorbell that a lot of people are using across the United States and even the world is that this is, has, changed the, uh, has changed the idea of a doorbell forever, is that you can now have a camera and doorbell and all in one and even hook up security and safety features. So, uh, so I could be able to check who's at my door through an app on my phone um, or tablet or PC through the Ring app. Um, so this just gives anyone the chance to be able to check the door and, and even be able to speak with the per or, or whoever is at the door. I could speak with them and, and see whoever that is even from the comfort of my own bed or living room or anywhere and not necessarily have to get up and go to the door to check. Um, and it's also a way for other people to check in as well so that, so even if I'm not at the house and I'm a caregiver, you know, I could still see who's coming in and out and make sure that my client or patient is being safe and out of harm's way. Um, this does also pair with select Alexa enabled devices. So with with those devices, it could uh, it, it does enable two-way communication that I could speak back and forth with whoever is at the door. So even if I was the caregiver and I wasn't there, um, I could still chat with them and, and I'd be able to convey messages to the person at the door without uh, actually having to be there. So that's the Ring doorbell. Um, and also other devices for just like remote supports, um, which is what this is highlighting at this moment, is uh, the, the uh, Echo Show. So the Amazon Alexa devices, uh, it, it is Alexa enabled through Amazon, but this is the Echo Show, which actually has a uh, LCD screen, as you see in the in a photograph on this slide. And the cool thing about this specific device, as it does all the, the other features of a regular Alexa enabled device um, that, you know, it can tell you jokes, riddles, it can set schedules, it can help you create lists for groceries and so forth. It can tell you the weather and so on. It, it can do so many things. Um, but with, with this device that has the LCD screen, it has a feature called drop in. And then as long as you pre-program this in your Alexa app, then I can enable certain people the uh, ability and access to just drop in. So if I'm caring for my mom or dad or anyone like that, then I could enable, you know, family, friends, and certain individuals the access to drop in on, on, on whoever that might be. And that allows you to, to quite literally just pop up on the screen for them as if it was a FaceTime, um, but they don't have to actually press any buttons or answer the call. It could just say, basically, uh, you just show up on the screen just pops right up as if it was a phone call. And then you can say like, hey, how are you doing? I just wanted to check on you and see how you're doing. So it does, it does have a two-way like FaceTime screen through their drop-in feature on the Alexa show, which is what this device is called, the Amazon Alexa, or yeah, Amazon Echo show, because it has the screen that it shows. Um, so both devices have to give this permission so the, the receiving device has to accept them as well as the other device. 
So it takes two people to enable this feature. And once enabled, then you have the ability to drop in on whoever it, it, it may be, client of yours, family of yours, whoever the caregiver might be caring for, and be able to see into that room. So it's wherever you position it, that'll give you that uh, view of their house or room um, and be able to also communicate with them and be like, how are you doing? And check in and see if something's wrong and so forth. So um, that is the Amazon Echo Show. And over here is a device that is a security camera called the Blink Mini. And this works with Alexa devices. And this is just one instance of a camera being able to work with Alexa, but there are other devices and other mediums to use security cameras through. But I like this one because it is compatible with Alexa and it's easy to set up. It doesn't require a whole lot of IT know-how or, um, or experience. And it can also alert your smartphone whenever motion is detected, or I can customize that motion detection in certain zones. So I can see certain areas that matter most. It might be you know, high fall risk areas, like in the bathroom or the shower or the stairs or anything like that, maybe there's high risk areas that you wanna keep a special eye on, um, then I can set the cameras up in those areas and it can tell my smartphone with a notification if there's movement detected in that zone. So this can be great for caregivers, just keeping an eye on those who are maybe elopement, wandering risk, that could be dementia or Alzheimer's or any other reason. Um, and it also allows me to see and hear and even speak to people or your pets in your home through the use of your smartphone that connects to these blank minis, which are the security cameras that are called the blank minis. Um, and it has two-way audio features as well. So I could actually speak to someone through the camera if I needed to um, and convey messages. And it, it projects a live view of what's going on in the home at the time you're viewing it. So if I needed to run out to the grocery store or pick up some supplies or medication for my client or family member, um, then I could still have peace of mind knowing that they are being watched after and looked over, especially, with, uh, especially in regards to safety through the use of my smartphone. So I can always just pull that out and take a quick look and make sure everybody's okay. And if not, if there was an emergency, it would give you in real time what's going on and allowing you to have the opportunity to speak with them through two-way audio. And if needed be, call 911 or something for them as, as it gives you access to what's going on in the house. So, uh, so, so this camera, one is sold for $34.99, but uh, you can buy two cameras for $64.99, so that would save you about $5. And then you could also buy three for $84.99. So that would save you another $10 or so. Well, it would save you money off of the cameras instead of buying them all individually. That's the Blink Mini. Um, and also there are Deadbolt Smart Locks. Um, so, so these all vary depending on price and brand. But I wanted to just you know briefly mention these as that I could lock the door from uh, using my phone or Wi-Fi with a lot of these that are that have Wi-Fi capabilities. Um, not all of them do, so you should definitely look into the fine print of one of these before you can make your decision. But a lot of these do have that ability that maybe I've, I've left the house, I've left whoever I'm caring for as a caregiver, um, you know, for any one of many reasons. And I need peace of mind just to make sure that their door is locked and safe from, you know, any, any kind of harm that might come their way or any kind of emergency, you know, intruders and so forth. A peace of mind of just knowing that that door is locked could be very valuable and that I can control that from my cell phone um, or from web access. So it could be a mobile app or website. Um, and I can also receive uh, access event notifications via text or email. So if somebody was in and out of that house, then I would be able to actually get a notification that I could see that and just keep an eye on things and be able to lock the door remotely. Um, so this could offer a whole layer of peace of mind and also lets you know if there's anybody arriving while you're gone and just to help 
help keep you in the loop. Um, and uh, you can also change the codes. So if the code got compromised for any reason or you needed to let maybe a plumber or maintenance uh, individual into the house for any reason, then I could give them the code and upon them leaving, I could change that code so very easily. Um, so this is great for just smart home safety and being able to lock deadbolts and head doors. So let me move on here. So I wanted to also, just as we were talking about Amazon and kind of smart home, just, just you know, um, smart home devices, I did want to just toss in here that there are smart plugs. And by smart plug, it is a outlet that plugs into an outlet, but the smart plug outlets, um, they have Wi-Fi capabilities so that they are able to connect to the internet and being able to be used and also compatible with Amazon Alexa devices, um, or it could also be OK Google or any other smart assistant, as long as the software is compatible. Um, and that can be used to turn items on and off with the smart plug. So, you know, as it's a remote support, maybe there's coffee brewed in the coffee pot or a curling irons on. Um, I could actually plug these into smart plugs. And if I needed to turn them off remotely, I could do so. Or also, if, even if uh, like that client wanted to be able to use their voice and be able to turn things on and off with voice commands, as Alexa is able to do voice commands, saying things like, hey, Alexa, turn on the coffee maker then she could turn that on for me with just the use of my voice. So that could empower individuals in the home just to be able to interact with certain appliances and, 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 uh, and other devices likewise with the use of their voice. Um, and also can also empower caregivers to be able to turn these things off remotely in case they are gone and not in the house and they're curious, did she turn off that coffee maker? Is it just sitting there brewing all day, staying hot? and it could be a fire hazard or safety risk, then um, it could be a great way for a caregiver to just keep an eye on certain devices and being able to turn them on and off, even if they're not in the house through the Amazon Alexa app. Um, so I did wanna to touch on smart plugs that you can get these for around $24 a piece for certain Alexa enabled ones. And also while we're on the, uh, as far as remote support and environmental control units, which we've kind of pivoted to the ECU portion of this caregiver series, is that environmental control units are uh, things like Alexa that can control parts of your environment through the use of speech and otherwise. So being able to control an individual's environment, house, even temperature, um, all that through the use of these ECUs can be very empowering for that individual. Because a, a large part of a, a caregiver's duties is not always just doing things for the client or patient, but actually empowering them to be able to do these things on their own so that they still have that quality of life and can be able to do the things that they need to do without always having to ask for assistance or help. So just making this as easy as possible for them um, is always a major goal of a caregiver, you know, and that also comes, you know, um, it varies depending on the abilities of that client as to how much independence and access to this that they actually have. But um, so as I'm talking about these environmental control units, another uh, avenue of this would be smart bulbs, like light bulbs. So controlling my environment and my lights, maybe I fatigue easily, uh, I can't get up and down you know, easily, maybe I'm a wheelchair user um, or blind low vision, or you know, it could be any reason someone might need assistance with controlling their environment. And, and making these things voice activated, like these bulbs can be, these are Eufy smart light bulbs. And this allows me uh, to be able to, to plug these in or screw them into the wall, even recess lighting. So that with the uh, smart plugs, I could plug a lamp or something straight into this and turn that on and off with my voice. But maybe I wanna screw these directly into the ceiling or anything like that. These light bulbs also have Wi-Fi, uh, excuse me, Wi-Fi capabilities. That I could say, hey Alexa, or hey Siri, or okay Google, turn off the lights in the kitchen or in the bathroom, or wherever that might be, and she could do that for me. 
Um, so this is able to empower individuals to, to be able to interact with their environment um, just, just more successfully. Um, and it also, also gives these the, the added feature of it has a percentage and scale of brightness. So instead of just turning the lights on and off, um, I could say, hey, Alexa, set kitchen brightness to 80% brightness, that maybe I don't want it on full brightness, then I actually have um, a scalable brightness interval that I can set these light bulbs to. Um, and it can be used in ceiling lights, it could be put in lamps and so forth. Um, so these are just other environmental control units. Um, so we've talked a lot about Alexa devices, but here's one more, which I really like because this gives a individual the opportunity to turn and turn on and off the television through the use of voice commands. And that would be through the Amazon Fire TV Cube. Um, and this can be plugged into any TV through an HDMI cord. So that's pretty much the only thing you need, but it comes in this package when you buy this device. And our library has this as well. Every device I've spoken of so far, we actually do have in our library, aside from the, the deadbolt uh, smart locks and the, the ring doorbell. We do not have those at this moment, um, but everything else we do have available for loan, including this Fire TV Cube. And if you're uh, watching this right now and you've either used or you've seen a Amazon Fire Stick, this is essentially just like the Fire Stick, but this has the added feature of giving a person the access to things like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, uh, Disney, you know, and so forth. Um, it gives any TV basically the ability to turn into a, more or less a smart TV with all these apps that you can download and so forth. But this can be also be uh, accessed and interacted with via voice commands. So with this device, I could say, hey, Alexa, turn on Netflix, and she would do so. I could say, hey, go to Grey's Anatomy, you know, season one, episode one. Um, so all this can be done with voice commands instead of having to press buttons on a remote, which might be difficult for some, or, or any other reason it might be difficult to interact with the, the television, then I can just use voice commands and be able to do so. Um, so this is a great device that has increased access to, um, to television through the use of voice commands. And also having this in my bedroom and using those voice commands to get on my television, um, it still interacts with all the other devices that you may or may not have set up in your home. So smart plugs, smart lights, even smart blinds for windows that can go up and down with voice commands and so forth. All that can come through this device as well. So this is still an Amazon Alexa device. So this would interact with all those devices as well. So I could have one of these in my bedroom. I could put the Echo Show maybe on my nightstand or maybe in the living room or kitchen for drop-in features um, and so on and so forth. And I could have the Ring doorbell outside. This can all work with, with, with one another in order to be able to have remote monitoring, as well as environmental control over your surroundings. Um, so another great device. And this is $120 for this, but it comes with all the right cords, plugs, and accessories like the HDMI cord and so forth. Um, and then once you buy this, it's ready, to, it's ready to go. Outside of you just need Wi-Fi. And once you have Wi-Fi, then it connects on the uh, system and it's ready to rock. So that is the Fire TV Cube. And other uh, environmental control units, which could also be a remote support, would be something like the Roomba or other smart vacuums. Um, I think the most popular one is the Roomba, but there's other brands and, and other devices out now. But um, essentially, this is... Excuse me one second. Sorry about that. Um, so, so this is... Uh, it's able to be used remotely. So even if I wasn't home, then I could turn this thing on and have it clean the house and vacuum while I'm out as a caregiver. Maybe I'm out and I could have this do it for me while I'm gone. Or just as an individual, maybe you know I don't have the ability to actually vacuum and get up and plug in a vacuum and, and move around the house with it and then empty it and all these things. 
then a Roomba is a great alternative to helping keep a, a house tidy, clean, and not covered in dust and dirt, and can be used remotely through the use of smartphones and things like that. Um, and if these devices are smart enough that they're actually able to, once they have low battery, it will take itself back to its docking station, plug itself back in the wall, charge up, and then it'll be ready to go for another spin. So it does require you emptying out this dust bin inside the Roomba. So that would be one thing that needs to be done that a caregiver could help with. But other than that, this could be used, you know, as much or as little as the uh, client wants with easily setting it off and making it uh, go. Um, so it can help someone take away that strenuous activity that can be cleaning, which is going to oftentimes be strenuous and difficult to maintain as we age. Um, so this is the, the Roomba. And not just aging, it could be for anyone across any type of disability as well. Okay, and moving forward, this is a device right here called the Grand Pad. Um, so the idea behind the Grand Pad is that um, it can be used for like remote monitoring. Um, and it is a tablet. It's basically, it simplifies a tablet for an individual to use. So if somebody's not especially tech savvy um, and a regular, you know, iPad or Android tablet, sometimes it's overwhelming with the vast amount of features and abilities that it has. And sometimes it's just a little overwhelming. So the uh, Grand Pad is a tablet that can be simplified um, in a way that, you know, I could have this being used by um, a client or patient or family member of mine, if I was the caregiver or family member, um, then I could pre-program the contacts list. Um, so whoever this person might like to speak with, um, I could have that set up very easy. I can go to call and then it'll have, you know, if I have 10 or 15 contacts of people that I might need to call, maybe it's the doctor's office. Um, and then maybe it's, you know, after that, my children, my friends, my neighbors, you know, and so on and so forth. Then I can have a photograph of who that person is with their name listed. Um, and it's very intuitive. I can hit call, I can click on that face or that name and I can call that person. Um, so it simplifies that process. It gets rid of uh, clutter and distractions that might come with other tablets and smartphones. Um, and it allows people to connect with, with one another. Um, so it also gives access to the internet um, for, for things like email. Um, and you know, it does have the ability to browse web pages as well. It's also got the ability to have music put on it so that you know, I can hit one of these large icons of email or photographs or music. And, and even the photos can be uh, uploaded by anyone who's granted access to this person's account. So if I give this to a patient or client or family member of mine, I can uh, enable access from their other family members, other friends, and people can just upload photos as they see fit. And then whoever's using the Egram pad can go to photos and there might be a whole bunch of new ones uploaded from whoever was around, family and friends. Um, so it can be a great way for people to stay up with one another and just sending photos back and forth and making it a super easy process and experience for the user who might not have a whole lot of tech you know, experience or, or a background. Um, so it's, it's a, essentially a, a simplified tablet that allows people to interact with it in a much more intuitive way um, and stay in touch with friends and, and otherwise. Um, so I do also want to talk about this device here is the My Live Wall. So this was, it was created with memory care patients in mind. Um, I actually met the guy that did create it and we spoke about this device and we actually have one in our library, is that his mother had dementia and was in a memory care unit at a uh, assisted living facility. And he wanted something to put on her wall that would be able to have photographs sent to it so she, she could see her family and friends and be reminded of them, but also uploading things like a schedule, like lunch schedule, um, you know, daily activities and so forth. And this doesn't have to be in a uh, assisted living facility or, you know, any kind of office like that. It can be put in someone's home as well or uh, apartment. But um, basically it can be used as a medium for me. Maybe I'm 
you know, the son or daughter of somebody who I'm caring for. And then, and I'm not always there. Then I can send them photos. I can send them cool uh, quotes, blurbs, you know, anything like that. And it's got three buttons on this unit. So it's got a button that I, that as the user, I can press one button and read messages. So maybe I want to send them a message that says, hey, how are you doing? Just checking in on you. I hope you have a great day from, you know, James. So I could send them that message and they have a button that it'll actually tell them, hey, uh, you have a message. It'll flash. There's just three buttons on the bottom. It'll actually flash when you have a message to be read. So you can press that flashing button. It'll pull up your your new message and it'll even read it out loud to you it has speakers on it um it has another button that's red so i can press that red button and it'll call for help so that might you know by help it might just send everyone on this account which a, a, a account can be created and i can put you know as many people on this account as an email chain so that if they press help it'll send all of us on that account a, a alert email stating hey uh, so-and-so, whoever it might be, has pressed the help button. And so then I can give, you know, whoever it is a call real quick, or I could pop in on the Alexa show or, you know, any other device. And I can just check in on how they're doing. Hey, how are you? Um, do you need any help? You need, you know, is this an emergency and so forth? How are you doing? Um, so it's a great way to have just interactions between patient, client, family, and their other friends, family, or a caregiver. Um, so this is the My Live Wall, and it can be used for things like meal plans, daily schedule, um, and so forth. So really cool device. And um, this is hanging up at our uh, demo and loan library right now as we speak. Um, and I did wanna mention the PowerLink 4. This is another environmental control device. Um, and it, and it has a uh, easy setup. So basically the idea behind this device is that it plugs into the wall. It's got a, uh, an outlet, uh, it has a three prong outlet that'll go straight into the wall. And then it's got on the sides of this on either side, as you can see, it's got other basically outlets. It's like an extension cord type thing that I can plug a, um, a plug into that outlet. Um, and then at that point, I can now make anything uh, switch enabled. So, and by switch, I mean a button that you press and it creates some kind of response. So I can actually plug in two separate devices into this that maybe, you know, I don't have the fine motor control or dexterity or the, you know, I have arthritis or anything like that, that might uh, impede an individual's ability to interact with any device that's around them is that I can use the device, the PowerLink 4, which costs $275. And I can now make anything that turns on and off, I can make that switch enabled. So instead of, you know, on certain lamps, they have that scrolly thing that turns the lamp on and off. That might be really hard to reach for some people. Um, and, and even if I can reach it, actually taking my thumb or finger and scrolling that thing up, uh, it can be difficult for a lot of people. Um, so an easier way to make something like the lamp, for instance, uh, a little bit more accessible would be making it switch enabled. So I can hit a switch button and switches can look like a lot of different things. And I won't get into all the different switches in this PowerPoint, but um, that's a whole conversation of all the different types of switches that are out there to enable users of varying abilities to be able to interact with. Um, but either way, I can press a switch or set a switch off and I can turn any device that plugs into this plug of this device and turn it on and off with that switch. So just pressing, and that could be a really big button. It could be a small button. It could be a light touch button that just takes a little bit of touch and I can set it off. So the sky's the limit with this, as far as anything that plugs into the wall and needs power can plug into this device and then become switch uh, accessible. So the power links are really cool device there. Um, and lastly, on our caregiver collaborative, um, we do have a library tour, which is about seven minutes that can be found on our website or YouTube page. Um, so I definitely invite anyone watching this to go on there, see our, uh, our AT library, and just check out all the different devices that we do have. They're all available for a 30-day loan if you so choose. 
through our through our library, excuse me. And uh, Denise Schuler is in this video, and she does an excellent job going along the, uh, around the library and just discussing a few different devices that we do have in, in each realm of assistive technology. And, and by realm, I mean things like we have aids for daily living would be one section, blind low vision devices, deaf, hard of hearing, and so forth. Um, so uh, she does a great job explaining that, going around the room, showcasing a few devices and talking about our program. So I would definitely check out that library tour. And also online, we have a, uh, a blog that talks about AT devices and just things that might be just recently hitting market or just cool ideas or, you know, just other ways to get involved with the community and so forth. So it's always worth popping onto our blog and just checking out kind of what we're talking about this week or month. Um, and we also have a Facebook, Twitter, YouTube that, that we post our videos um, and just other information and facts and AT knowledge. And that we actually have also added a TikTok page as well. Um, that's been recently launched. Um, so uh, like this uh, PowerPoint's complete at the end with all our contact information um, about you know uh, where we are located, telephone numbers and emails to get involved and reach out to us. So I'd be happy to answer questions about anything you've seen here or maybe talk about things that weren't actually included in this presentation that we also offer um, as part of our demo and learn library. Um, so this is for the Maryland Assistive Technology Program. And we also, I did wanna briefly talk about our high-tech AT reuse program, which is the, the Maryland Assistive Technology Reuse Program or Center. The acronyms MATTER, M-A-T-R. And uh, this is primarily ran by Denise Schuler who was in that video on, the, on a couple of slides back I was just uh, talking about. But the idea behind this program is that it is reuse. So it's based solely on donations from other individuals who may not need that device that they have currently anymore. Um, and once that is, uh, and once it's donated, it's then cleaned and if needed refurbished and tried to be fixed up and, and presented in a way that it looks as good as possible, it functions appropriately. And at that point, it can be uh, given to clients on open-ended long-term loan. So that might, you know, it might be just a month or two, but it could be a year, a couple years. So the idea behind this program is that it's, it's all these devices which are donated are then given to the clients who need them for as long as they might need them. So whether that be five years plus or less, um, it doesn't have the, the stipulation of a, um, a certain time constraint that it must come back. So it's a little bit more liberal in how long the uh, people are able to keep those devices for. And they have lots of high-tech AT equipment like CCTVs, video magnifiers, uh, eye devices, adaptive peripherals for computers like keyboards, mice, switches, um, AAC devices, um, amplified telephones, and, and a lot of others. So they actually have a link embedded in this PowerPoint for uh, all available items on the website. Um, and that is completely dependent on what is donated as to what's available. So um, I know she does a great job of keeping that inventory up to date so that it showcases what is available but it's always worth reaching out via email or phone call just to double check and see what she has there that's available at that moment. Um, and then our regional contractors like the Bay Area Center for Independent Living, they have a, um, also have a, a demo in one library. So, so this is in Salisbury, Maryland. So this is one of our partners as well as the Southern Maryland Center for Independent Living down in, in uh, Mechanicsville. And we have one other contracted partnership with the Western Maryland Center for Independence Living, which is called Resources for Independence or RFI. Um, so each of these, so we have one on Eastern Shore, one on the West, and then one in Southern Maryland, plus our, uh, our home office mothership that I am uh, primarily working out of is in Central Baltimore. So we try to have a few different locations around the state that individuals 
can also stop by and get assistance if they can't make it all the way to us in Baltimore. But we are able to ship devices through USPS, postal services. Uh, so I can ship devices direct to the consumer and I can meet via Zoom as well. So I did wanna mention that. And then other uh, centers for independent living that have small AT libraries. So they might have a few devices that they'd be happy to talk about and showcase would be these other SILs here. So I wanted to include them in this presentation. And that concludes episode one of the Caregiver series. So thank you for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.